Well, there's nothing like jumping in and, and playing a turn and experiencing a new system. Uh, welcome to the big board. We're looking at Red Army, turn two. <clears throat> a couple of minor hiccups here and there, but basically a very straightforward, simple game. And I, and I mentioned earlier on in the last video that uh, destruction of uh, Army Group Center from World of War magazine was a simple game. And I said it was a somewhat simplistic. And here, here's the difference with this game. This game employs a set of rules and a series of uh, mechanisms to play the game, uh, structures to guide your play that are immediately familiar. And you will you'll step into them and you'll go, oh yeah, okay, I know what I need to do here. I know I need to stop when I move into a zone of control. I uh, know that I need to, uh, you know, just do uh, basic odds calculations and all that sort of good stuff when I do combat. And I know that terrain is going to have an impact on both movement and combat. And it's all pretty straightforward. But, but, within that, with this game... There are a, a, a small handful of specific little nuances that give it a little essence and a little flavor. <coughs> Excuse me. And and it's it's strikingly different from the other game, uh, this uh, World of War magazine game, but it, it employs some similar concepts. So a couple of things that are different in this game. One is there's no advance after combat uh, because that would interfere with the sequence of play because there's these two different combat values on, on the counters. I think I told you about them last time. If you're moving and you go into combat, you use that number. If you're uh, not moving when you when you enter into combat or have not moved when you enter into combat, you use that number. So, you know, two different, uh, two different numbers that, you know, represent the ability to have all your forces in the right place at the right time. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can come up with a hundred different reasons why that's the case. And it doesn't matter whether it's right or whether it's wrong. It's just that it's a little nuance, right? And what was the other thing that was different that I forgot to mention last uh, last video when I did the live stream? Um, oh, the road movement and supply rules were a little bit different as well. There's a couple of different iterations on, on movement. So if you're coming, if you're using a road to move through uh, difficult terrain, you're paying extra movement points. You're not getting the road rate the entire time. I think that represents the narrowing and, and elongating of the the formation that's trying to get through. So, excuse me. So that's <clears throat> it's a little bit different. So the first turn. Uh, so anyway, so there's a couple of different things that are going on here. Going on here. The first turn we played that. Very comfortable, very interesting, but uh, and not and not a blowout, <laughs> as opposed to our other experience. Now maybe it will be a blowout in, in two or three turns. Uh, the loss ratios were relatively close. So I don't have my notes handy. Where are they? What did I say? We took uh, twelve losses for the Germans and eight. For the Soviets with two units killed outright for the Germans, which I believe are non-replaceable. And there are some reinforcements in this game, uh, and some re 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 uh, replacement points, I would call them as well. Uh, the units have come on, the, but they come on the far side of the board, so it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. So anyway, let's have a look and see what, what went down. Over here... <coughs> I've got very uh, clogged up, so I apologize if I'm sniffing and snorting. Let me just steady the camera for a second here. <coughs> so I think this is the first Belarus front. And we've got uh, the 5th Army, we've got the 6th uh, Guard Army and uh, 45th Army here. Trying to take this city, whose name I forget now, Vitebsk here, I think it is. Is it Vitebsk? Yeah. And that's proved to be challenging, you know. So two rounds of combat here, forced to retreat and a step loss, forced to retreat 
uh, here and because there's no advance after combat, we've got to wait till the following turn to capitalize on on the, these uh, these empty hexes. Then we can clear out these fortifications. So the, the Germans have done okay here. Uh, not so well in this area here, where excuse me, where uh, near Dubrovno, uh, the main town here is Orsha. Uh, the, the Germans uh, took a little bit of a beat down here, but managed to pull back with their two movements. No combats. They, they've moved back as far as they could. That, that nuance I told you about the road movement is a little tricky. If you're using road movement, uh, you can't start in an EZOC or end in an EZOC. Uh, that will give, if, you do, if you don't do that, it gives you an extra movement point. But I think you still have to pay the extra MPs to, to run through this rough terrain or road. That was a little unclear to me. Probably the only thing in the rules that is unclear. So in Mogilev, uh, we kind of pull everybody back here towards the city. I'm just going to try and use the river here as a primary, uh, the Temper River as a primary uh, defensive line makes sense. Very thin here. Had to, uh, I took, took a bit of a beat down here, so we're at risk in this area of being uh, these guys come forcing up the road and enveloping Mogilev, causing problems, or hooking around and uh, and wrapping up all the boys that will eventually be in uh, Bobarusk here. I think that's how you pronounce that. Had a little mini breakthrough here, but we've managed to pop, you know uh, slow that down. So some attacks are going to have to happen there. And over in the Pripyat marshes, it's just a mess. Uh, very slow going for, oh, let me zoom out a little bit. Very slow going here, so it's gonna be hard press for any anybody to get a lot of traction in this area. Either way, I think I've probably over overweighted uh, with the Germans down this end of the map. If I had my drillers again, I'd, <clears throat> I'd probably put one or two units further up the, the line here on the second army line and allow them to drift up this way to reinforce here a little bit, or perhaps pull back to uh, Slutsk here, or even Minsk uh, in, in the next turn or two. So that's an end of turn one. Interesting gameplay. Feels feels a lot more, uh, feels more right than wrong at the moment. We'll see what transpires. The Red Army from GDW, a little Frank, Chadwick uh, experience. I'll talk to you guys soon.